Hey, it's Guilherme, and today we're going to talk about Signals. Signals is Godot's implementation of the observable pattern, and some of the use cases that you might see Signals being used are UI, achievements, collision detections, and other situations where you might want to notify someone that something has happened. The demo that we're using here is made in Godot version 3.1, so if you want to play with, around with it, you're going to have to use this version of the engine. Let's begin by having a look at our demo. We have a player that we can control using our keyboard, an HP bar, and an enemy. As soon as we get close to that enemy, he's going to start to follow us, and as soon as he gets in range, he's going to attack us. Then, when we get damaged, our HP bar is going to get updated, and all of this is being done using signals. To achieve this behavior, we are using two signals. One is emitted by our player to notify our UI element that our HP has been changed, and the other signal that we have is when our player enters an area around our enemy that signals to him that he has encountered a player and it's now time for him to start following the player and try to attack it. To better understand what signals are, you can think of them as messages that are sent by an emitter and are received by an observer. The observer may do whatever he wants with that information. This means that different observers may do different things when a signal is emitted. And the emitter, the one that is sending the messages, does not care who or what is listening to these signals and if there are listeners in the first place. He's just sending these messages and whoever wants to react to them does it. So in the case of our player, even if we didn't have our UI element in the bottom, the signal would be emitted nonetheless. And this is really important to keep in mind because this leaves no coupling between the emitter and the observer. To see what signals are available to you, you can select any node in your scene. In this case, I'm going to select the player. And to see the signals, you're going to go to the tab right next to the inspector. And here you're going to find a list with all the signals that are going to be emitted by this node. In the case of our player, we also have a custom signal called health changed that we are going to connect to our life bar to update it. Now let's open the enemy scene. And here you notice that we have our hitbox, which is a collision shape, but we also have as a child of our enemy an area 2D. And this area 2D has a collision shape which is circular and we are using it to detect our player. If we play our game now, you'll notice that the behavior of our enemy is not working correctly, so let's fix that by connecting the correct signals to it. What we want to do here is connect our body enter signal from our area 2D to our enemy for it to react when this happens. So as we saw before, we can go to the signals tab and here we're gonna look for the body enter and we're gonna click on connect. This menu is going to open and here we can select to which node we want to connect the signal to, rename the method if you want to, so we can call this whatever we want, if we already have this function created inside of our script, Godot is not going to create a new one. It's going to identify that we already have this function and connect to it. If not, he's going to make this function. And if we'd like to, we can also add extra arguments to our function call. With the root node of the scene selected, in this case the enemy itself, I'm going to click on connect. And the script editor is going to be open to us. And here we can see the newly created function that Godot created to us when we connected this signal. By connecting signals this way, we get an icon that tells us that this node has a signal connected to something, and on the node tab, we can also see which function this signal is connected to. If we'd like to, we can also disconnect the signal. We don't want that, so let's reconnect it. And as I said before, this function has not been recreated because we already had it inside of our script. Here, we are going to check if our body is not a player, and if that's the case, we're going to return from this function, but if it is a player, what we're going to do is set our player to be equal to the body that we just found, set our physics process to true, and now we can already play the game. Now when I get closer to the enemy, you can see that he's starting to follow me and is going to attack me when he gets in range. Though our HP bar is not working anymore, so let's fix that. Before doing so, we're going to take a look on another method of connecting signals, which is by code. We're going to go to our actor detector and on our node tab, we're going to disconnect our body enter signal from our function. And now we're going to open the enemy script. If you take a look on our first line of the script, we have a reference to our area HD. And with this, we can go to our ready function and access our area. And here we're going to call the function connect. This is a function that you have to use to connect to signals. You can already see that Godot is giving to us options of signals that we can connect to. In this case, we are interested in the body entered. The second argument is the object that we want to connect the signal to. In this case, we want to connect it to ourselves. So we're going to pass self to it. The third argument is the name of the function that we want to connect the signal to. In this case, it's going to be on actor detector body entered. And if we'd like to, we can also pass an array with extra arguments, as we saw before on our editor, that we were going to receive as arguments in our function and we could use them inside of it. In this case, we don't want to do it, so I'm just going to remove this array and close the function. Now, by playing our game, 
you notice that the behavior of our enemy is still working as expected. And lastly, there's one more thing that we can do in the script to improve it. As of now, if I put a breakpoint in our function call and play our game, you notice that this function keeps getting called even after we have detected the player. If I go inside, we reach that breakpoint because we found the player. I'm gonna press F7 to keep playing. And now if I go far away from the enemy and enter it again, this function is being called again. But we have already found the player, so there's no need to keep this signal connected to ourselves as we're just spending resources that could be saved. So let's stop the execution of our game. And after setting the player variable and our physics process to true, we're going to reach once again to our area and call disconnect. Here, we once again have to pass the name of the signal, who we want to disconnect the signal from, and the name of the method. To make our lives easier, I'm just going to copy and paste the signature that we had on our connect function. Now, if I press F5, you'll see that when we get close to the enemy, for the first time, we are going to reach this function. But if I keep playing the game, and move away from the enemy and back once again close to it, this function is not going to be called again. Now let's fix the problem with our health bar by going to our game scene. And here what we want to do is connect our custom signal, which is health changed that we created inside of our player. So you can see that by opening its script. And on the top, you can see that we have a signal called health changed that passes along with it a parameter which we are calling new value. If we look at our exported health variable, we have a setter method called set health. And if we scroll down to it, you can see that whenever we reach this function, we're emitting the signal health changed with the current health. This means that whatever connects to the signal is going to get the new value of our health when the signal gets emitted. If we take a look on our life bar scene, you notice that this scene is just a texture progress with an HP label attached to it. If we open its script, you notice that it's currently empty. So let's connect the signal from our player by going back to our game scene, selecting our player, on the note tab, we're going to double click health change it. Here we don't have to change anything, just select our life bar and click on connect. As we're using type of script, I'm going to set the return type of our function, in this case is void, and the type of the new value, which in this case is int. And here, whenever this function gets called, we are going to reach out to our value and set it to be equal to our new value. Now we can save our game and play it. And whenever we get hit, our life bar is going to get updated. Here we saw some use cases where you can use not only signals provided to you by Godot, but also custom signals and how to connect them using both the editor and code. You also learn how to disconnect signals, although this is not really common, but it can happen as I just showed to you. And hopefully you could see how powerful this tool is and how you can apply it to your own games. As always, the project is available on GitHub and you can find a link to it in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.